Hey guys, welcome to another episode. It is a hot one again today. You can see we've got the fans going to cool the garage down, but we're actually gonna attack our trunk lid ourselves. Now I've gone to about three or four different body shops and they all want almost as much as what I paid for the car to paint this thing. And it's just not worth it. This car has scratches all over it. You know, the paint isn't perfect. If you're able to buff it, um, I'll make sure to drop a link for that video so you guys can see the before and after, but it's just not worth the money to spend that much just to get this thing painted to match. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna do it here in-house today. So I've, I've painted my Fiat 850 project car, the entire car, did the body work on that. I'll also make sure to drop a video link for that up above here so you guys can see that before and after transformation of that project. So it's on a much smaller scale, but the same principles are gonna apply. We'll be using the same tools, same method. That paint job turned out really good, so I'm anticipating this to be the same. There's only a couple issues with this trunk lid. There's two holes from where a luggage rack was mounted to this originally. It looks like the other two got filled in, but this is just a primer gray. Um, they weren't filled in very good, might I add. But, let's say they filled in, and so we're gonna just do it ourselves. We're gonna fill this two in with a little bit of body filler. It's not a big hole. I'm not looking to make this perfect by any means. We're just gonna get it to match the car, front and back. The underside is a gold color, and this primer gray is on top. So we're gonna start with the body filler and get sanding this nice and smooth, um, getting around the rough edges, things like that. Like I said, not looking for perfection. I just want it to match the car um, and look halfway decent um, to try and match it. So let's jump into it. We're gonna get that Bondo, get that started mixing up that body filler, show you guys how to do that. We'll fill in these little tiny holes and then we can get started. As we make our way to the bench, I'm gonna show you these little holes here. There's one here, one here for where that luggage rack was mounted originally. And you can see where someone before didn't fill it super well. So we'll go back through and fill those up a little bit. On this one, you can actually see a little bit of daylight through it. Maybe not on camera, but there you go. Now you can see some daylight. So we definitely need to fill that because we don't want any leaks, stuff like this along the edge that's rough. Like I said, not looking for perfect, but a lot better than this. So before the body filler can be put on it's such a smooth surface already like someone's kind of worked on it we need some way for that, that body filler to attach to the car and so we're going to take some 60 grit um, or 80 grit sandpaper and we're going to work just these areas that way the body filler has somewhere to attach to we're going to do it on all four of these spots that way it just has a better chance of sticking Now we've got that sanded a good area around those. They look like those two that look like they've been worked on before had actually been welded in and no body filler had ever been put on. So those holes are mostly plugged up already, um, which is a good sign, less for us to do in sand. Um, so what we're doing is we're just working this hardener um, around a little bit as per the instructions. Make sure it's nice and warm, which isn't gonna be much of a trouble today because it is a hot one. Got that mixed up. We're gonna grab our flat head here and we're gonna open our body filler. Okay. We're also gonna grab our mixers here. We got a variety pack, three different sizes. I think we'll be okay with this medium size. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put some body filler on here and then we're gonna put some hardener in it. It's supposed to be a proportion of it, but I just kind of eyeball it. Yep, that looks like enough or way too much, which is just fine. We'll make it work. We're just rolling with it. So we're gonna um, set that to the side, get our hardener here. And it wants like a one and a quarter inch strip but we're just gonna, you know, sure. That looks fine enough for me. And we're gonna mix this all together so it's all blended. A few moments later. All right, so we don't have a whole lot of time. So we're gonna get this over to the car. You can see a lot of that red is mixed in together. This is gonna start hardening, so we've gotta get to the car real quick. All right, so I've got our applicator. I'm gonna start with these bigger holes first because we have the most amount of filler right now. I'm gonna do my best to smooth it out. That way it's less sanding down the road.
we're supposed to allow about 30 minutes for it to um, harden up. So we'll knock out some cleaning around the shop while we let this dry and cure. This is definitely way too much filler, but that's all right. All right, we're gonna let that dry. It'll take about 30 minutes and we'll come back and see how it looks. Obviously we made way too much, um, but if we were looking to do, you know, perfection with little dings that are throughout the hood, we could fill them in. Um, you know, I think there's kind of a big one, maybe on the front here. I swear I saw one here. Oh, right here. There's a couple low spots. We've got enough. We're just gonna go for it. Like I said, I, I don't want perfection, but we've already got it mixed up in here on the board. Otherwise it's gonna go to waste. Might as well fill in what little bit we can. Because black shows everything, unfortunately. So I think that's really the only marks we've got. So with that, we're just gonna let this dry up, set up and clean up around the garage a little bit and uh, get some stuff out of the way, make some room, clean up. It's always good to reset the shop. So we're gonna set this to the side, clean all this off our applicator and uh, see how it goes. Since we've got that trunk drying in the sun, we've got a little bit of time. We've picked up some stuff around the garage. So what I think we're gonna to need to do is figure out a way to hang it from the ceiling so we can paint both sides at once. Because once we set the paint, we're gonna want it to harden um, and really let it sit for a while, maybe even overnight and come back to it tomorrow. So I wanna make sure that we can hang it up to where it's not gonna be in the way. Um, I think but I also don't wanna spray a whole bunch of stuff down with paint. I've got the car covered um, so we don't get overspray on that. But I don't really want overspray on everything. So can't really come up with maybe something between two ladders and a pole and ratchet straps probably. Uh, we're gonna have to get creative here. So we're gonna mess around with that off camera a little bit and uh, see if I can come up with something creative. That way we can get it all knocked out at once and not be chasing it for several days trying to get both sides and ruining one side while one's flipped and just wasting our time. So let me see what I can come up with. brought it out from the sun the metal is still a little hot but it is looks like it's ready to be worked so we've got a small sanding block here um, I don't want to use my hands because I'm gonna have pressure points on my fingertips on my, on my palm of my hand down here and those are gonna dig in and I don't want that I just want even uh, sanding strokes we've got 180 grit that we're gonna start out with here um, or sorry 320 this is 320 Probably a little too high um, for what we're trying to do to shave off stuff, but I didn't put on a whole lot of this body filler, so I'm hoping this should do it. I don't want to use too aggressive too fast because I can always go more aggressive, but it's hard to go back from that because if we start super aggressive and go too deep with too thick of strokes, um, it's gonna take a long time to refine those, those scratches out. So I'm gonna start high and work low. Um, probably to start here in this corner. And I'm just going to do forward and backwards, side to side. I'm not going to do circular motions, um, just straight um, in either direction. A few moments later. We can see from this initial sanding that we have some low spots, um, but that's all right. We're starting to go through to some metal on this side. So we want to make sure that we're not going any farther. We're trying to make it go out. That way we can really blend it together. Um, I can feel it for sure on my hand. So we're going to be seeing some more. You can see some of the dark gray is still there. So we're still working it. Um, some of the metal coming through here. Don't want to go too far out because it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And the less we, the less, big we get the less feathering in we have to do so sanding is not really exciting to watch so i'm going to try and time lapse some of it for you guys 
where we're gonna get uh, these high spots, low spots, try and blend them. My goal is to go over it with my hand and not feel any ridges, because if you can feel the ridge, then the paint's gonna show the ridge. So I can feel it here, here, all along the outside, I can feel it. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. So we're gonna put some music on, time lapses for you, and then we'll come back when all of these are complete. The first round of sanding is done. I'm kind of glad I went with a little bit higher grit at 320. It took a little bit longer, but it ended up saving a lot of time in the long run. And the metal looks good under here. That's which a good sign. There's still some low spots, especially here. There's like a low spot and you feel a little ridge, not a ridge, but just a bump. Like I said, I'm not going for perfection, but uh, I just don't want the holes. So this filler is doing its job, filling up those holes pretty good. Uh, nice and feathered out. I don't feel any edges of the filler, but uh, when it was spray pine, this this etching primer that's on here, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show it, but there is a ridge, kind of a, a rough texture on this primer. So I'm gonna have to go over the whole thing with that 320 just real quick to knock down all of that filler material that's in that primer. Some spots are soft and smooth like that, but then you come over here and it's just super rough. So I'm gonna take that same block, I'm just gonna go over this real quick, nothing really interesting, just smooth it out, and then we're gonna go up in grit. I think the next one I have up is maybe like a 600. Really get these touched up, smoothed up, is this gonna be a repeat of the process, uh, repeat of the process over and over and over again until we get it smooth. Um, I just don't want any of this rough texture to come through the paint because it definitely will, it'll look really bad. I'm gonna have to sand it all down and start again. So little by little, we're gonna slowly up the grit of the sandpaper so we get up to about 1,000, 1,500. Um, so we'll probably go to 600, then 800, then 1,000, and see where we're at at 1,000. And if we need to go one more time, we'll go up in grit. But this is really what we're doing. Um, but I'm gonna bring you guys back when a lot of this is taken care of, because you see what it takes to get there. We took up that grit pretty high, a little over 1,000 grit sandpaper, but we have made it completely smooth. No rough spots, we went over the entire surface. Now, I know there's going to be issues. This is not going to be perfect. Um, if we come around this way, if we can get the light on it right, right in the middle here, you're going to look right about here. You can kind of see that it's not quite there. You can see it there. Like that. Right, so it's not going to be absolutely perfect. Um, we're going to find some low spots. I know there's going to be a low spot here. Um, another one here. Me a little one there. So we're not gonna go back through and repack more filler on top of it and resand it. You could do that. By all means, if you're trying to make it absolutely perfect, go ahead and do that. But we are not going that far. Um, this car is not perfect by any means. So we're not gonna make this perfect. It'll look weird having the trunk in perfect shape, perfect paint, and the rest of the car not. So this is more than sufficient. So what we're gonna do now is gonna take it outside. We're gonna wash it. Uh, get all the little dust particles up and out of it and we'll flip it over um, it's gold underneath we'll pull off any stickers or anything like that and we'll wash that side i'm not worried about sanding the other side it's inside the trunk um, not really going to see it except for me so we're not going to go that far as far as filling in holes and things like that we might straighten out some metal spots um, where stuff's kind of hooked on holes or things like that but nothing farther so we're going to get this out there let's get it washed up let it really dry in the sun, we'll flip it over and do the same thing.
Now we're in the fun part. What we're going to be using is a Rust-Oleum gloss black oil-based paint. Um, it's hopefully going to match pretty close. Uh, like I said, not looking for perfection. It's not the factory feel at black, but gloss black it should hopefully blend pretty well. Um, we're also going to be using some acetone. Um, this is left over from when we did our 850 paint job. Um, so I still had some of this in the cabinet. And we went to the hardware store and picked up uh, one of these cups with the measurements on it. We're going to be using a two to one ratio, two parts acetone, one part paint. Um, we're going to start mixing them together. And we've also got ourselves the cheapy Harbor Freight Special. I think it was like $16 for the gun. Um, comes with the little reservoir for it and everything. I've used the same gun uh, when we did the 850 project, so I'm familiar with that. I also have a tack cloth. We're gonna be using this right before we go to paint. All that dust um, that is outside when it was drying, um, we're gonna be uh, getting all that off of there. So what we're gonna be doing now is getting this opened up and ready to go. We're unfortunately gonna only be able to do one side at a time. Uh, there wasn't really a, you know, it looks pretty close. Uh, there unfortunately was not a really good way to hang up the trunk lid without making a huge mess of overspray and everything else. So I'm just gonna go with it. We'll just do one side at a time, let it cure, um, and then come back and do the other side. So we're gonna be doing two parts, um, acetone. Um, so we'll probably go up to the eight ounce um, for acetone and then fill up the rest with black. It'll probably be way more than we need, but better to have too much than not enough. And then we run out and have to stop and stuff starts flashing off and we don't want that. All right, so there's eight ounces of acetone. I'm gonna move on to the paint. All right. And we're gonna mix that around uh, and I don't have something to mix it with. So we're gonna go a little old school here with that while I try and scramble for something to stir this with. It's all right, what we'll do is we'll go onto the gun Get that on there all the way. We don't want any leaking out. That'd be really bad. Okay. And we'll probably mix it back and forth. That way it mixes well. Not perfect. We're just kind of winging it. All right, let's get this top on. Let's go, that way it doesn't start to evaporate or anything. Nice and tight. We'll set this gun up so it's nice and vertical and we'll go tack cloth. And then we can start uh, putting some paint on. Hopefully it doesn't look too bad, but we'll find out in a minute. Now as I tack cloth it here, The reason I have it on the ground on this carpet is because the overspray is going to be crazy. So um, I'd rather be on this dirty old garage rug than I would on the concrete. Some is actually still going to get on it. But anything that matters that's around here, um, I have covered the motorcycle, um, stuff like that, fan don't really care about. Um, but I do have the garage door open. I do have two other fans going to cycle the air out of here. So it's not going to be anything crazy. Uh, the car is covered. Um, so we won't have any overspray on the car, so I think that's about as good as we're going to get it. Uh, we're going to be going with 30 PSI, 27 PSI, right around there. Let's take some of this. And we'll do some test sprays on that. It's actually not too bad right out of the box. All right, we're gonna run with it. So here we go with the time lapse. Let's see how it goes.
Well, it actually didn't turn out too bad. It actually looks really close to the color of the car. Um, I mean, black. I don't know if there's a whole lot of ways you can mess up black, but I guess you can. You can definitely see the imperfections in the hood here, 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 a little bit here, a little bit where that hole used to be. Those other ones filled in pretty good. Um, just some dents and dings, but I mean, that's the story of this car. So we're gonna, are you serious? A bug literally, literally just landed on this. I think there's like a magnet for bugs on fresh paint. I don't understand. Yeah, now you're stuck, homie. I've got freaking bug guts. Well, you're gonna live forever now within the paint of this car. We're not expecting perfect. I'm not gonna fret on perfect. Long story short, we're gonna wait about seven minutes, let this flash off and do another coat. Um, I went a little heavy, so maybe we'll do another extra minute just to really let it flash and then we'll do another coat on there and we'll let it sit um, and really cure up that way it hardens up um, enough to where we can flip it over and do the bottom side of course we'll put a towel on top of the wood here that way we don't scratch any of this fresh paint that we're putting down there will be a lot of orange peel um, so we'll have to wet sand with some 2000 grit I have some we'll wet sand get that kind of broken up and then we'll go over with the buffer which seems to be our best friend around here and uh, we'll get that taken care of, but it's a lot better than the primer gray it was, uh, just with this first coat. So let's set a timer, we'll let it flash off, we'll come back and do it again. Seven minutes has passed, um, we're going to go with another coat. I can still see some rough spots where it didn't quite get taken care of, but like I said, not looking for perfection, the car isn't perfect either. So here we go, coat number two. So another seven minutes or so, um, and we'll see what we come out to. Um, a lot of it looks like it got covered up pretty good. I don't see any other spots where I can see some of that filler or anything like that. So it's getting better. So let's see how it turns out. So this is after two coats. Um, there are some spots that were low that didn't get made. You can see it's a rough spot, um, little flicks of fur and that bug that decided to die in the paint. But you can see where those holes kind of used to be. But you can also see where some of the dings and dents in the hood there, probably from luggage in the past falling through and actually hitting the, the trunk lid here. But I mean, for doing it in a day, it's pretty good to me. I mean, it's not perfect, but I didn't want it to be. Because like I said, it's gonna stand out really odd against the car if it's too good. So we're gonna let this really cure. We're gonna let it sit out um, and get completely dry. And then maybe we'll be able to flip it over a little while and uh, let it um, harden um, and then we can flip it over and get the underside painted do the same thing with the tack cloth and get all wrapped up with this and really let it set so i'm happy with it so far we'll definitely have to wet sand and buff it to get rid of some of that orange peel but that's not a big deal we've done that several times so it's been about two hours or so and we can see how good it actually turned out. Not too bad. Um, we'll definitely have to um, wet sand it maybe, or maybe we can get away with just a buff. I would love to get away with just a buff and not have to wet sand this. Our bug friend did land in it, but um, it turned out pretty good. So I think what we can do now is we'll flip it over on our expert painting table and we'll pull that one sticker that's on the bottom and then we'll paint the bottom and do the same thing, two coats, uh, seven minute flash times. We'll set it out here for about two hours to uh, really let it cure uh, to harden up in this hot Texas sun. So let's jump into it. Just like the top, we're gonna tack cloth it, getting loose debris off of it. Um, like I said, I didn't really prep this side super well. Uh, you might've seen when we were cleaning it, we took the super aggressive Brillo pad, Scotch-Brite pad, and really scuffed it up so that way the paint has something to attach to. Uh, this side I'm not super worried about. It's not something that's really going to be seen. Um, it's inside the trunk. Not super worried about it. I'm really hoping that these witness marks um, come back through. It would really be uh, nice to be able to put the trunk back on perfectly straight on a first try, not having to do it by trial and error. So 
think we are pretty set here. Let's see how much comes off this tack cloth. Support it while we're doing it. Make sure we're really set. Any loose stuff that we don't want in the paint, and hopefully we won't get a bug, a bug, a bug in it this time. But it seems to be a magnet, so I think we are ready to give it a try. All right, just like last time, we're going to do that one a little bit heavier coat, do a seven minute flash time, do a second coat, um, let that flash, and then we'll set it outside to dry in the sun. case scenario we ran out of paint and we are halfway through our panel um, note to self check that next time that'd probably be a really good idea um, but I think we were fast enough with our mixture because we had it all out still where we could put it put it together and, and make it in time still looking pretty good um, I think our next time around on our second coat We'll come from this side to hit this side of the structural parts of the trunk lid. Other good news is we can still see our witness marks uh, for the trunk is supposed to line up. It's going to make putting this back on way easier. Um, so this is a really good start. Again, seven minutes and come back for another coat. We've had time for it to cure and it feels good, nice and smooth. I'm not going to buff the inside. Um, don't really care that much to have it as shiny as the rest but we were able to get in front of this touched up all along the borders and it's nice and uh, smooth to the touch and I think we only got one bug on it and I was able to get them out so we were lucky there just a couple dings from the inside people are probably trying to close stuff in the trunk and it wouldn't clear and they're trying to force it shut it's probably what that is other than that, it turned out really good. I think the best thing to do is get this on the car. So we're going to come inside here. And we'll line up those witness marks on here. I'll take a water wheel and clean this up so all this crud isn't rubbing in there. But we'll get it lined up to this. We'll put it on. We'll close it. And then I think we'll buff it on the car. That will get some actual leverage. I could do it on the sawhorses. I just don't want it to fall off or lean off to one side and risk damaging it and have to do it all over again. So I think I'm going to install it, then I'll buff it. So let's do a quick time lapse, see if I can get this installed. I do have the nuts. I might put a lock washer on there as well, um, just to make sure they stays on there. actually to make it fit really well by using those witness marks um, from whatever car this came off of. We just had a little tweak here and there, but it's nice and flush here, nice and flush here. It's relatively centered. I think those hinges are a little bent, um, but it would make sense considering that they've been up for so long and they might've gotten bumped or tweaked or, you know, who knows. So I'll take that as a win. Actually matches really well. I'm excited to see what it looks like when we get this rubbing compound. We're just using a turtle wax, um, rubbing compound nothing crazy um, we don't need to use the Meguiar's like we have in the past because we're not cutting really 
Um, we don't have the old faded stuff to get through this fresh new, so we're going to just use some of them a little less aggressive and um, get it in there. So we're gonna give this a shot. Uh, I've just got it taped down. I don't have a latch, so I'm having it taped down with painter's tape for now. Um, and then we'll be able to do the edge with it up in the air. Well, I think you see what I see. The side here is a little hazy and this is clear. Well, what happened is when we flipped it upside down and painted it, the overspray settled. So you can see it all on the outside where the overspray had fallen on top of it. So I think what we're gonna have to do is respray the top one more time to get rid of that. Um, I'm just going to have to clean all of this up from the buffer and rub it out, but we're going to have to spray it one more time because we're not going to be able to buff this out and I don't want to buff too aggressively and then eat through it and then end up repainting it again. But I guess it's kind of the trade-off if we just kind of go for it with something a little bit more aggressive and maybe it'll work it out. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. Let's try something a little bit more aggressive, see if that works. Um, to get some of this out. It looks like it's coming out a little bit, but not as much as we need it to, because now you can see a big old ring around it. Well, it seems like the Ultimate Compound saved us yet again. Um, it's gone, so I think we're gonna go around with the rest of it. Pretty heavy here in this corner where you can really see the difference. So we're gonna see if it'll work its magic, and we'll do a once over all over again and see if we're able to get rid of it. You know, imperfections here or there are going to be just fine. We'll end up matching the rest of the car. In the camera, you can see that there's two different blacks. And I noticed that right away. But in person, it's not so different. Um, not as noticeable, I guess. But either way, it's still better than the gray primary color that it was. So this will work for now. Um, you know, it's not meant to be perfect by any means. It's meant to be driven. So... Anyway, let's get this figured out, fixed up, and we'll see what it looks like when it's all done. There we go. We got all that overspray off for the most part. Way better all the way around than Meguiar's Ultimate Compound saved our tail, because I was not going to want to repaint this. Um, there's definitely a difference in the color. All right, I'm, I'm going to first admit it, there's a lot shinier and a darker black than this. But, you know, I know it doesn't match, but, you know, it really doesn't match, primer gray. Primer gray and black definitely doesn't match. So I'll take this any day. You know, it's it's something cosmetic that'll make us feel better like a project is moving along and we're getting there and we're making progress. You know, we're not any body guy by any means, you know, but the holes aren't there, so we're not gonna get leaks in the trunk. But this is actually not too bad for something I did at home for about 50 bucks. Um, I saved myself hundreds and hundreds of dollars doing it like this because I'm not going to spend the value of the car that I bought it for to paint this. You know, it doesn't make any sense. So, I'm quite happy with it. Alright guys, and that's going to be it for this episode. We did a lot today. Um, we did uh, the trunk with all the bodywork, filling those holes, getting it all sanded down relatively smooth, as smooth as we could get it. We um, were able to get the, all the rest of the primer smoothed out. We were able to get the paint on it. We were able to install it. We were able to buff it. I mean, we really let that paint cure before we even bothered putting it on out in the sun for several hours um, it started super early this morning so that's heck of a progress and i'm proud of it i'm cool with it i like it it's way better than the gray and it looks more like a real car you know we're starting to come together we're starting to get pieces back together and it's starting to become more of a reality and that's what's really exciting about all this 
So with that, that's going to be the end of this episode. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Just make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out. Make sure you guys subscribe. It really, really does help me out. So I can continue to keep working on cars like these and bringing them back and keeping them on the road. So until next time, we'll see you.